So what I want to teach you about today is how to improve your figurative language in your writing. So you might be asking yourself, well, when should I use figurative language in my writing? Well, here's a few tips. You should use figurative language in order to enhance the reading experience, help paint a picture for your reader, as a way of getting an image or a point across or to transform your writing from ordinary to extraordinary. So whenever you feel like there's a place that you really are not being clear and you don't feel like your reader is really seeing that picture, I recommend adding a little bit of figurative language. Let's review. So remember we learned earlier in the year what a simile was. So a simile is when you compare two unlike things using the words like or as. For example, the plates I'm holding start to fly upwards, soaring above the heads of customers like bald eagles searching for their prey. So the plates aren't actually flying upward like bald eagles, but I'm comparing the two and I'm using the word like to compare them. Here's another example. It feels as if someone is tap dancing on it. So nobody's really tap dancing on this person's head, but it feels as if someone is. And so therefore I'm using as to compare um, the throbbing to tap dancing. Here's a metaphor. A metaphor is when you compare two unlike things without using the words like or as. So for example, the teens storm the doors. The teens come so fast as if they are like bombarding the doors, but I'm using the word storm. I'm comparing the way that they're coming to the doors like a storm, but they're not actually a storm. So therefore I'm comparing the two without using the words like or as. Personification. So personification is when you give a non-living object human characteristics. So when I say, I feel the floor smack me in the face, the floor can't actually smack me in the face, right? That's personification. I'm giving the floor human-like characteristics in order to get that um, reaction from you as the reader. Okay, I get it. But how do I include it in my writing? Here's an example. I grab some plates, hand Joe another order slip, and head over to drop off the plates. So this is how I add figurative language to this sentence. I grab some plates as if they were flying saucers ready to soar through the air, toss Joe another order slip, and head over to drop off the plates. So here is my simile. I'm comparing the plates to flying saucers. And that gives you a little bit more of a imaginative idea when you think of this, when you read my writing. Here's another example. This place is a disaster and the line is now out the door. Here's how I make this sentence more exciting. This place is a pigsty on rollerblades and people are lined up like ants waiting to meet their queen. So I have two things happening here. First of all, I have a metaphor. This place is a pigsty, right? When I'm using the is a, I'm comparing the place to a pigsty on rollerblades, so it's a metaphor. I'm not using the words like or as. Here, I'm using the word like to describe how the people are lined up. They're lined up like ants waiting to meet their queen. Last one. I pour the last drops of a coffee pot into the high school student's cup and reach over to grab another pot. The pot I grab is empty. This is how I make this sentence more exciting. The last drop of coffee dances its way into the high school student's cup with a splash. I reach over to grab another pot, but the pot I grab is as empty as my tip jar will be after this nightmare of a shift. So I have a few things going on in here. First of all, I have the word dances, and that is an example of personification because the coffee can't actually dance because it doesn't have, it's not human, right? I'm giving the coffee human-like characteristics. Um, when I say um, as empty 
as my tip jar, that is an example of a simile. I'm comparing um, the pot of coffee, the emptiness of the pot of coffee to the emptiness of my tip jar. And then finally, I'm comparing this, um, I'm comparing the shift, right? The, um, the shift as she's working at a restaurant to a nightmare. So that's an example of a metaphor. So in this, these two sentences, I've managed to take this sentence and, and include three different types of figurative language, which really brings the sentence from ordinary to extraordinary, because now I have lots of images flowing through my head when I read this. The last drop of coffee dances. I can actually imagine the coffee dancing into the high school student's cup with a splash, and I see that splash happen. Um, I reach over to grab another pot, but the pot I grab is as empty as my tip jar. So now I really can figure, I can really see a tip jar, how empty it is, and I can see how empty that coffee is. And everyone's had a nightmare, right? So when I compare this um, shift to a nightmare, I really can imagine how horrible it must feel for Jill as she's going through this shift. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to revise your narrative writing today. I want you to look to look for three or four places in your writing that you could include more figurative language. Try including metaphors, similes, or personification here and watch how it transforms your writing from ordinary to extraordinary. Um, I'm around to help you today. Miss Renicky is around to help you as well. Um, use us to um, help improve your writing. Use your peers to help improve your writing. And you guys are doing an awesome job, so keep it up.